college. College, 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 college. The thing that's out of sight but on everyone's mind. That strange figment of our imagination that seems to have world defining consequences for all of us. After four long years of trying my best, putting my academics first, and juggling numerous extra extracurricular activities, I stand at the peak of the mountain, finally given the chance to look at the cliffs below. And all is not right. A dogged system ruled by grades is a reality that we live in. One where a student's self-worth is somehow governed by how well they did on the Algebra 2 honors test. One where grades are falsely deemed to be the objective, the difference between the objective truth between the American dream and extant poverty. A system with very real implications for us Arcadia students, but in the eyes of some is merely a system for furnishing a resume, maintaining unrealistic expectations increasing property value. But I'm being pedantic. By the time you reach your senior year, you know all this already. And much, much more about our school beneath the gilded surface of being the top 1% of public schools on niche.com. That the blood of this school is toxic competition. Throughout my high school career, I've tried to confront this existentialism through various means and ways. I made a, de I made a video detailing the school experience and advocated for club, student, and electoral change. I've been hesitant to talk about my own time and experience as each of these events deserves its own long-winded essay or speech. But as I approach the top of the mountain, before I transcend to join the peers who've gone before me. My heart is set on me personally kahuni these stories in retrospect, and therefore closing this chapter of my life. These are the stories that my college application can't tell you, an original, by yours truly. On June 22nd, 2020, a bomb dropped. What started as the exposure of a traumatic crime became a catalyst for a student outcry for accountability and justice as a case of sexual assault and underage pornography came to the forefront of Arcadia. The details of the complete story in itself deserve to be told from the perspectives of those who are closest to the incident, and therefore I cannot do it justice here. Yet it is clear from the outset that the incident had sent shockwaves throughout our city, evident through everything from social media discussions to the way that parents and authorities got involved as well. Seeing all this happen brought an unnerving question to my mind. What would have happened if the victim didn't speak out? Previously, two of the victim's classmates reported the incident to the police over a year earlier but were unable to make any progress, being rerouted to three different officers and eventually being shrugged off and told, well, this is why you girls shouldn't send nudes by supposed officers of the law. This instance of dismissal by authority is too uncommon. It's too common in response to instances of sexual abuse but is adjacent to another uncomfortable reality at six close to home. The perpetrator in question was a high achieving student in the top 1% of schools in the country. He was an ASB member, being able to get close with authorities in positions of power at school. He had privileges and power 
that make any case against him during school hours challenging because exposing him for the criminal that he is show cracks in the prestigious reputation that Arcadia High School has built up. I don't know whether he would have been brought to justice if multitudes of students didn't voice their support for the victim. What's even more harrowing to think about are the cases of sexual abuse that have happened in our midst that have been dismissed, never brought to light. For that, I weep. I weep for all of the victims who've been drowned in a sea of silence, left stranded without their justice. In my heart, only outrage seemed like a proper response. And soon I found myself weaving my frustrations onto a cool dock. Camera ready? I love Arcadia High School, and love is willing to acknowledge grave mistakes and work to mend the damage. Today, I'll be kicking that love, largely to talk about a disease that plagues students here. The reason why people ask about grades is not because they care about their peers, it's because they're comparing themselves to their peers and judging them based on their grades. I cannot tell you how many friends and other students I've seen stress themselves out and devastate their health. I've seen parents only take pride in their children for social status with little regard for a student's well-being. The student focus on positions of power and extracurriculars is unhealthy and detrimental, but is only facilitated by neglect of the authority that governs this school. We need acknowledgement that there is an unhealthy environment at Arcadia High School, and we need to stop sending students who don't meet the perfect Arcadia standard to Rancho Learning Center for the sake of garnishing graduation rates. There is a reason why students don't come back to Arcadia after college. It is because they remember the neglect, the constant judgment, and the never-ending competitiveness that drove them mad. If you are an incoming freshman watching this, I want you to know something. Never forget that you are great. You are wonderful beyond grades or activities. Your hopes and dreams will incarnate into action, which will propel you forward. Know that your self-worth and happiness is not in grades or activities, but in just being you as a human being. Before I knew it, I was sitting in front of my phone taking retake after retake before I upload my video to YouTube. I love Arcadia High School. I love Arcadia High School. I love Arcadia High School. Throughout it all, it was hard for me to put these thoughts on paper and make them public. Before I started writing, I tried my best to be the silent Asian caricature because my previous fixation on a successful career somehow persuaded me that controversy and speaking out is unbecoming. I also faced doubts about whether I would receive retribution or not. Would others go out of their way to call me a liar? Jealous? Shovelmaker? Too young to know what I'm talking about? Thankfully, that was not the case. Instead of criticism, I found a plethora of support from parents, alumni, and other community members, and my peers. My extemporaneous speech captain three years ago, my mentor and friend, Christian Chung, who graduated, told me, quote, everything I wanted to say my entire time in high school has basically been perfected in your video. It helped that I didn't do it alone. Lauren Sung, that dastardly and lovely political rogue that he is, copy edited my speech. My parents empowered me to speak my mind, and the pastor that I looked up to prayed for me. 
as I was going through the process. After, on, June, on July 4th, after a night of insecurities and doubts, the cheesy titled video, The Truth About Arcadia High School, was published to a viewership of thousands. That video became the catalyst as I looked for ways to make a change in the community around me. I eventually found my efforts directed towards school clubs. Last June, a few friends and I got together and formed an organization called AHS Students for Club Reform, or SCR for short. We had the goal of improving club guidelines, improving ASB accountability, and providing opportunities for uncharted clubs. Throughout our school year, we accomplished these goals by discussing adjustments we would like to make to the current clubs commissioner and presented our alternative solutions to the current club about the current club guideline system in a presentation to ASB as a whole. Due to our efforts, we got a mandate that required all 50-ish clubs on campus to fundraise removed for the school year of 2020 and 2021, and not our mandate which required outside activities to be advertised rescinded. Additionally, we also created a website for a virtual unchartered clubs day, as these clubs often don't get the visibility and support that they need to become chartered in the first place. We were slowly, but surely, growing our numbers. Then came the ASB Spring Elections of 2021. Now, to preface, there is this incorrect, but pervasive idea that Arcadia High School students don't care about this school and the issues that our school encounters and just want to graduate. But this perception is blatantly false because students at the school really do care about making a difference. But there are simply few, if any, visible avenues to see instrumental change be implemented. As an organization, we believe that an effective way to bring, is to bring issues that students care about will be to use student elections as a vehicle for discussion and debate on how to improve our school. We brought up issues such as ASB accountability and perception, toxic competition, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and club and academic team guidelines. Thus, I wrote the quick beginning letter, let's make spring elections not a popularity contest and sent it out using my student email account to a student email account of, my, of many ASB candidates, including incumbents who are running. Many students thanked me for bringing up these issues and my SCR peers for bringing up these issues up and promised that they would promote some sort of reform in the next school year as part of their campaign. But to some, it was perceived as threatening, notably by some former ASB members who either did not read my letter at all or who thought that the phrases verbal conflict may be necessary for progress here in terms of the barriers that students face in discussing systemic racism and saying, if you do not post or acknowledge any one of these issues, then you may not have the support of many of your peers within the context of the school government election presents an eminent threat to their well-being. I wholly do not believe my words were threatening, but you can be the judge of that. Read my letter for yourself in my link tree and tell me what you think. All of this culminated on Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021. I distinctly recall being told by my second period A Bush class that I needed to go to this specific Google Meet. I had been partially expecting this as I received an email from Mr. Munoz asking for a meeting to cryptically make sure that we're all on the same page going into this. Talking about ASB elections, of course. As soon as I knew it, I was sitting alone in the Google Meet with Mr. Munoz and Mr. Finn. From the outset, there was a clear imbalance of power in this meeting. And I pointed that out to the vice principals after requesting to have my mother in the meeting. I told my parents about the, my letter beforehand, so thankfully my mother was very calm and collected throughout the meeting. It did not seem if they expected a parent to join the meeting. As Mr. Finn remarked to my request that my mother joined the call, saying, This isn't about power. This is about your actions. Followed by, We, we don't think this issue will reach that level yet. Referring to getting the parent involved. It was quite off-putting to me that they intended to have a conversation that required me to be pulled outside of class without getting a parent involved. The two main points that they had an issue with was a supposed perception by some students that my letter was threatening, and my use of student IDs in sending out my email. They had said that demands are unacceptable on campus, and if any threats were to be carried out physically or through social media, then discipline 
would be necessary. Which, of course, I had zero intention of doing, much to everyone's shock and awe. It was clear that the intent of my letter was to encourage discussion about with, with candidates to talk about crucial school topics. And the closest I ever got to any threats was saying that they might not get enough votes from fellow students during elections. How am I supposed to use that as a threat? The issue of student IDs, on the other hand, seems understandable on the surface. As they said, there is money, there is money attached to each student ID. Those student IDs, I have to point out, are very poorly protected. Being pasted on every single corner, whether it be Google, Google Classroom, CSF and NHS public lists, or a teacher or a student accidentally CCing the whole entire class instead of making IDs. Of course, I can say in full confidence that I did not have any intention to defraud anyone through their ID. If you ask me, I felt as if they were trying to scare me from talking about these issues further, rather than enforce any legalistic school policy. I want to reiterate that the vice principals acted because some people felt threatened, rather than actually being threatened. And I did not write any promise of harm, physical, mental, or academic within my letter, or in the emails that contained the letter I sent out. I was, and still am, pretty incensed that all of this happened. I used passive aggressiveness and snark to describe how it all went down, but ultimately I faced frustration and some trauma after I was in a Google meeting. I had put my heart, my mind, my soul, my body into what I believed was right in trying to confront the problems that threatened the community I sorely love. Yet, what I got in response was a strict, heavy-handed denial of my aspirations, mm -hmm. that my efforts were going to be taken seriously. It didn't help that I had trouble sleeping for the next two or three weeks after that confrontation, or that I couldn't fully explain the story to many of my peers not directly involved in SDR, causing some misconceptions about what happened, who I am, and what I stand for. Heck, I started strong, but all the speech really is is a way for me to voice everything that I've been through these past few years. After all of this, I'm just tired. But at the end of it all, I somehow find the will to keep going. This experience of being confronted by authority has led me to be connected with Sunrise Arcadia and other students who felt empowered to push for local change. I feel stronger than ever about my identity, my Koreanness, my Chineseness, and my Americanness, and this Christian mixture of the social gospel and liberation theology that I adhere to. I stand resolute in front of you all, ready for the next chapter of my life, carrying these stories with me. Thank you.